So, our next speaker is uh, Garen Tamazan, and he is working in Siemensberg and Software as a software consultant and solution architect for Mindsphere. And in the remaining time, so I didn't thought there is remaining time after Mindsphere, but still, he is managing small software company. And in the remaining time, after the remaining time of the software company, he is trying to manage a small family with yeah. four kids, which is pretty impressive. And he's still saying he's, there is some remaining time left. And in this remaining time, he plays with some gadgets. So please welcome our speaker. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, ah, it's better. Okay, uh, everything works. So, hello everybody, my name is Karen. I'm doing some work for Mindsphere right now, since one year. Uh, pretty interesting journey, what's going on right now. Right now with Mindsphere, is a release, Link point always like out of the door and let's see how it goes. A lot of new components are coming, but I mean, like, Mindsphere is still kind of cloud computing, the edge layer is catching up. And um, what I'm like doing here, I want to discuss with you like the future of this whole thing, you know. Not necessarily the cloud computing. Cloud computing is a clear thing, yeah. Just cloud, put everything in the cloud, take it if you need it. Edge, also like very huge potential, some new projects coming up from from uh, from very really interesting big companies like this EdgeX Foundry and stuff like that. But let's talk uh, about end-to-end uh, -to -end today, right now, and let's start with some uh, buzzwords like IoT. Is there anyone here who does know what IoT means? Hands up. No. So IoT means it's only temporary. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but end-to-end -end is another story. Uh, that's Everyone here know what M to N means, or isn't? Is anyone here who doesn't know it? Okay, two gentlemen here. Uh, great. Uh, so, M to N is a mobile to mobile, or no? Sorry, manufacturer to mobile. Oh no, it's just machine to machine, and the term it's coming like from maybe it's probably ten years here already. It was before the IoT started the whole IoT wave. And Siemens was actually one of the first companies to jump on this bandwagon. Still in the times when Siemens got its own mobile business unit and were producing some mobile phones and selling it. So they decided we will take one mobile phone, provide some um, just connectivity to the devices and let devices talk to each other through these two mobile phones distributed somewhere. Interesting idea. Yeah, so machine to machine. It could be also device to device or edge to edge. It's how you define it. And uh, these both terms are like this, this, these things are the same or how they are related to each other. So let's ask ourselves two questions. Can every machine be a thing? The answer is yes. I mean, every machine could be like smart machine. Don't take this like 30, 40 years old machines who have no connectivity and everything. But smart machines who are doing some smart work to have, of course, have some connectivity on board. It, it can be potentially a, a thing. It can talk to, to the cloud, to, to other machines. So the answer is clearly yes. But uh, can everything be a machine? Well, I don't think so, because if you have a sensor installed somewhere, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a machine or it's a complete device. It's just sensing something, sending it somewhere else, and that's it. So a device or a machine is something more. It's kind of agent or something. Like, it's an intelligent thing, you know. So if we imagine IoT is a whole circle here, like the whole broad picture of the IoT, uh, machine to machine would be some kind of uh, subset of the IoT. And uh, what I think in the future, the proportion of this subset 
will be growing compared to the IoT world. And the IoT thing itself, it will, it will also grow, definitely. It will explode. But the end-to-end -end will be even bigger here in the proportions as it's in the current state. Um, yeah, just some examples of the machine-to-machine uh, -machine devices here. Uh, for example, some smart vending machines. Whenever you, the su supply of the goods which it's selling are like near to the end, it will notify the manufacturer like, or, or provider of the sub machines, like just their supply, the stuff. Smart meters, it's a, just a exact, uh, perfect example of uh, kind of uh, machines. You, you, you sense something, several stuff, and you send it to, across to, to your uh, operator, so that you, the user who, who has this installed uh, meter cannot cheat you because it will just send data, it's a closed system, and stuff like that. And potentially they can speak also to each other. If maybe there are some like the bigger or the most smart matter which have a better connectivity, like maybe 3G connectivity, and the other smart matters in the field doesn't have this capability, but just have some smaller uh, uh, kind of uh, range connectivity on board. So self-driving cars, it's an uh, emerging technology, will be here probably in 10 years already, maybe 20, depends. Um, smart homes, a lot of experiments going on right now. I do my own experiments, not always going good, but anyway, <laughs> playing around with the stuff. Um, smart drones, it's another kind of thing, like very much like self-driving cars, maybe delivering some stuff, doing some research, coming back to the base and like, even right now, this DJI drone, it has like extensive uh, telemetrics already on board and just doing some recording of, of, uh, of the field and everything. So, a huge potential there as well. Some machine-to-machine -machine use cases, let's go through. Uh, position tracking, definitely. I mean, there are some cars driving around on the field and you would like to track it. I think it's probably just the first like no-brainer use case you could imagine. And we will go a little bit deeper here. Uh, remote monitoring, yeah, very nice application here. Um, remote management, very much like coming from the industry. Uh, proactive servicing, we, at, at my store we call it uh, just uh, proactive maintenance. Leasing, yeah, a lot of new business models are possible. Just including the leasing, everything is a service. So let's consider platoons. In the nature, you would have probably all of you saw this kind of V formation in which the birds birds are flying. There is some logic behind. Nobody knows exactly what why they doing this, but <laughs> I mean they are traveling from one country to another one, very long distance and they want to be safe, not to be attacked by other uh, pred predators or other birds. And uh, they distribute the uh, resistance of, of wind through the, this formation and uh, probably some other background stuff going on there. Planes, I just, let's go back to the, to, to the nature. Uh, swarms of birds like flying in crazy kind of uh, clouds and everything. Or even under the water, fishes also use the, the, using the swarms not to be attacked by some predator fish, like bigger fish, just to be eaten. So they keep really the same distance uh, between each other, and uh, just they mimic a movement of uh, just another fish of the whole swarm. So it's, it looks really very impressive and beautiful. Uh, there are some examples also from human world. Uh, we have this. Oh, sorry. Let's go back. Uh, this uh, jet fighter planes and just on some uh, plane shows they have it like very beautiful also flying in the formation and it, actually they also save a few when, if they do so there are some research going on how to maybe like put such, such kind of uh, flying trains like where uh, they fly in some specific formation which formation is better and everything uh, racing cars just one is 
tailing the other one, and whenever he sees a weak moment, just taking over. It, it, he's also t saving some fuel, fuel here and just uh, getting some uh, less resistance uh, from from wind. <coughs> this is called peloton. You, know, you probably so everybody here uh, kind of championships of professional bikers, and this guy here is the beginning. He's getting very fatigued, and he cannot stay here for a long time. So. He goes, after some time, he goes just, just at the end of this uh, peloton. And the other strong guy is coming here in front for some time and just again uh, exchanging. So why can't we apply this kind of thing? I have video here. It's without sound. Oh, no, sorry. Let me try it this way. It's just one minute. Let's try it again. No. Is video not working here? No, I just tried the blank space and it was next. Oh, it goes, yeah. So it's a project done by Volvo, and it's a, it's an advertisement here right now. That's <laughs> right. Is it also Volvo? No, it's not Volvo. Google not so smart. Without sound, just you see this formation. They uh, they're driving in a, a car train. It's called. In front of the train, you you have this lorry, and behind the train there are cars. There are self-driving cars, and the distance between them is just only five meters. And the guys here inside just do, listening to some music, eating, doing whatever they want. And the new car is joining this. Um, car train or road train. This one leaves right now. And the whole formation, it just, the whole thing is a kind of organism. It's just self-controlling. And these are autonomous cars. And this is what like really exciting is this whole thing. Uh, let's stop funny things with the videos. Oh, 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 less congestion, congestion reviews, this, this kind of systems, and we don't need MindSphere or any other cloud provider there. Because, the, and I think this is the beauty of the whole thing. This autonom autonomous systems, they can manage themselves. They have, if they have some kind of framework which just helps them to talk to each other, I think this is something what we will be seeing in the future. Think of blockchain and what it's doing right now to the banking industry or what it will do in the short time. And the same kind of things I envision will be happening also in the IT world. And in most of the cases you actually don't need any providers to be a man in the middle to tell you at which time to call somebody. Like this kind of very simple use case. Uh, I'm living at home and I have my cellular at home and I want to call my father. My father lives just just uh, house next door, so just neighboring house. And I'm calling him 
and the whole connection goes like from my cellular to the base station and then to the operator to the NSA and then back and everything like back to my father who is like living like five meters away from me. Do we really need it? Like think about security. Okay, security no brainer here. I don't want to have it somewhere, uh, but also power. So cellular have to use more power to send data to the base station, which is located two kilometers away from my cellular. And it has to use some additional bandwidth to send this data. I can have much less overhead. Just um, This kind of system we don't have right now, but this is what will be emerging in the future. Why? Not because I said so. Because it's a no-brainer. I mean, we need this kind of technology, and humanity will evolve into in some years, in several years, maybe it will be not the next iteration after the IoT boom. Maybe it will be iteration after next or after next next. We will see. But uh, a lot of people here from city just be prepared. Something like this will be coming. Yeah. So it's the next slide. My um, machine to machine connectivity. Let's take it apart. There is a possibility to have. A wire connectivity like LAN or Ethernet, and another one is a power line. Yeah, actually, you can use power line. Who knows this Devolo devices? Devolo, it's the name of the company. So it was kind of like five or seven years ago. This was this uh, power line devices. You could attach it, they were coming in couples, like two of them in pairs. You can attach one to the power line socket and another one to another power line socket within your house. And there is an um, Ethernet SG45 connector. You can plug your computer or your uh, router and you can get this internet connectivity through the power line on the other end. I mean, they, they tried to position it as an alternative to VLAN. Now almost nobody hears about it. But it was so stupid they could use this kind of technology for house optimization. You don't need necessarily to send everything through the wireless kind of connectivity layer. You could use also existing power line there. And these new devices are coming, these power line sockets, which uh, through Alexa, for example, you, you give command like turn on TV and just, it will just provide power to your TV appliance. And that's it. I mean, it's such a no-brainer to have it with these Devolo devices. They completely missed the market because they were not, they were kind of like with a tooling, tunneling view, like, yeah, we're providing connectivity through power line, and that's it. They didn't think further. But it's a, it was a really interesting potential for the industry. Some years ago, I think they completely missed the market, and now everything within the smart house nowadays goes goes through the Wi-Fi. Here we come to wireless. Wireless could be like wireless wide area network. It's where the cellular is coming. And normally uh, for machine to machine you would use this kind of wireless connectivity. At least in nowadays all operators are pushing really forward this M to M and because they're earning money with this. They're providing the connectivity layer here. But you can actually abuse Wi-Fi for machine to machine communications and even Bluetooth and Zigbee's. Definitely they will have a small, uh, much smaller range. But anyway, maybe you have some smart devices just within your local area network, so it would work then. Yeah, two general topologies I see here. It's centralized one. It's kind of like centralized cloud or kind of message broker. Every peer have to speak to, to this broker in case to just pass message to, to the other peers. And distributed system, peer-to-peer, -peer, very interesting. Like existing already many years in the market. Uh, Self-organizing systems. So whenever the connection at one uh, node breaks and they will just uh, relink this kind of connectivity. So still message from this node will, be, will get passed to another one just because they just uh, recreated this whole connectivity thing. Yeah, now to the current state of the M2M technology, it's nowadays predominantly 
cellular networks, starting with 2G, 2.4, 5G, 2, 4Gs. Um, communication is controlled by mobile operators, mostly. Yeah, it always involves intermediary, clouds, messages, brokers, my favorite and NSA here as well. So, uh, these advantages of the current state, this bulky SIM card, and on the device itself you have to implement kind of slots which will take even more space. But it's where we are now. And security, there are always some kind of intermediaries involved and if somebody is involved it can potentially tap your information. Uh, although you can try to uh, create kind of end-to-end uh, -end encryption and hope it will work. I mean, it's unfortunately not always working. Expensive band bandwidth overhead. It's exactly what I told you with this uh, application when I calling my father. Just going using some bandwidth to go route through the whole world just to get my father. I uh, think more like walkie-talkies and home-to-home -home talk, car-to-car. -car. I was actually, 10 years ago, was involved in a project which I was using this blue chat technology. It just used the Bluetooth stack of a mobile phone. It could be a really very old phone, but Bluetooth has to be supported there. And you can send, through Bluetooth, messages to another mobile phone, which uh, have Bluetooth connectivity open their ID disposed and everything, you would use kind of a contact, it would, the message would be wrapped uh, in a form of contact information. It's like you, you, just, you can send a contact information at least before, several years before, from one Bluetooth device to another one without pairing. Just sending like my contact details from my phone to another one, then you don't need any kind of permission from another device. But you can abuse it like to send some messages. And I wrote this application, uh, it's a free, freeware, it's still somewhere there, uh, which sends a, uh, this kind of message to another phone, and another phone could, uh, if it has a similar application, uh, just sending some messages back. So I called it uh, Keep Blue Chatting. This is the name of the software and the technology behind. It's uh, not the real technology, but it's kind of loophole in the Bluetooth technology, which is called Blue Chat. Actually, in some Arabic countries, people are using it to get to know each other for dating purposes because they are not allowed to speak to women and so on, so they are using this kind of thing. Also, on discos in Germany, I, observed this, uh, I also saw this going on, like people are disposing their phones with their names or with their nicknames and hoping that somebody will just send some kind of request or some picture, hopefully not naked, but who knows. <laughs> yeah, so a base station can serve a limited amount of clients. Yeah, sure, I mean, there are some kind of event going on where a lot of people are accumulating in one place and this base station can fail. It has some limited capacity. But I mean, <coughs> if we meet each other in some place and we talk to each other, the communication is like flowing, it's, it's not like decreasing, it's like increasing. And the technology doesn't reflect this kind of thing. So it's a, definitely a bottleneck here. And we have a lot of devices in one place. Why not to let them speak to each other? We will have really scalable connectivity. As soon as two people meet somewhere, we have connectivity. And as soon as many people meet somewhere, we have a lot of connectivity. So this is the logic behind, and this is what will be also pursued in the future with this new kind of technologies. This is what we don't have right now. So solution, decentralization, peer-to-peer. -peer. I have to add here ad hoc. And also avoid, pro avoid providers and intermediaries. Very bad for business. And it will be very difficult to implement for the, for the society, for, for the open source community there. But Anyway, same of blockchain again, it just happened, and now you have to cope with this. So, at some day, it will just happen. Let's see the evolution, I told circles of evolution. At the top, we have distributed kind of systems, and at the bottom, we have centralized kind of systems. We started some years ago, like 30 years ago, maybe more, with mainframes, but definitely longer. 
uh, and then move to PCs. PCs were distributed every, not nowadays, every house has a PC and they're merging more to tablets or mobile devices. And now we are considering here cloud and we are moving, we will be moving definitely to smart devices. Uh, why? Yeah, well, just because everything is getting cheaper, technology is getting cheaper. You can put much more memory here. It's just becoming smaller than the chips where you can store data. Processors are getting really uh, very powerful and you don't need necessarily cooling there. So why not? Anything else what you would do is artificial. It will not take, uh, it will not stay for long. Okay, we have two minutes left. And uh, two predictions. It's very much in time. So uh, one for the corporate world, for the business world. New networks will arise in the near future, just within a couple of years, maybe already this year. NB-IoT, LTM, this is our narrowband networks or connectivities, which will allow IoT devices to have kind of predictable plans to send its data, its um, the capacity or uh, the throughput is slower, <coughs> but you can send constantly data. This is what like very much working at the IoT world. And it will be cheaper definitely, so you can connect a lot of devices there. And embedded SIM card will at some time come which will not require the card itself, it will be integrated in the IC. So you don't have, will have you don't need to spend space to put SIM card on everything. And another one, another prediction here, it's a disruptive one. And it will be also coming, I feel coming. And it will be a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer ad hoc system. Could be a framework, could be Many, many several frameworks. It will be self-organizing and it will, yeah, make intermediaries uh, absolute. If we have any time for questions, I don't think so. <laughs> yes, we have. We have okay. one minute. So let us uh, thank the speaker. <clears throat> and we have time for one question. <coughs> Dirty one. I like this one. One burning question. A burning question. Okay. If your father lives five meters away from you, why the hell would you call him on the phone? <laughs> Not on the phone. <laughs> yeah, but then I have to stand up from the couch, go several meters, like three stocks down, and then go to, to the street. You know, just, just joking. It's complicated. 